Hello everyone and welcome back to Tour de Banden, episode number five and we are back with the mountains as you can see in the profile we have three stages in Italy to this episode the first stage the Cortina di Empezzo with an amazing downhill finish 202 kilometers then we have stage 11 which is the Il Lombardia, which is not really a mountain, but it, again, very hard, a lot of downhills and a long, long stage. And then stage 12 will be the Milano San Remo for the sprinters. We have around 105 riders left on the start ramp. So let's begin with the action. And we are underway in stage 10 of Tour de Abandon, 103 riders in the peloton. And as some of you requested, uh, I will be more active with my remaining three riders, which are Bonamo, Coca and Lemoine. As also to note is we have two sprint gates here, a lot of climbing points to be had. And as a reminder, Delier still leads the general, general classification and he leads it by 17 minutes. And today it can change. He has 67 mountain. But most importantly, who will be the guys who are going to be DNFing today in the first first stage of the second week of the tour? Well, we're at the top of the first mountain, La Crosetta, and it's Pierre Latour and Dan Martin sprinting it for the points as Sean Bennett still leads. But Dan Martin wins the sprint and gets 10 points and provisionally second Miguel Angel Lopez and Enric Mas also in the breakaway with Uran. So it's a pretty strong breakaway. Uh, we have Loic Fliegen second in the GC trying to follow as well. But most importantly, the peloton is already 71 with we got plenty of dropouts already in the group as we still have 174 kilometers to go. Oh, we have a crash and it is on the breakaway as we see, okay, Bennett turns, Thomas De Hen, Martin and Bookman crashing. It's a very strong breakaway today as we've discussed and Loic Fliegen hanging on well, trying to get the yellow jersey maybe, uh, but the Peloton is only three minutes behind. I have tried going in the breakaway with Kokar, but obviously failed as the group was pretty strong, but Currently the first downhill nearly completed. Uh, we have one crash, but no abandons. We're climbing the Fedaya. 2.8 left for the yellow jersey, but already struggling is Dillier. Bennett has also dropped from the breakaway and currently will assign the time gap to Dillier to the peloton, which we can do to Tadej Pogacar. And already two minutes behind as we have attacks at the front as they enter the last kilometer of Passo Fedaia and over 2,000 meters and Loic Fliegen still hanging on at the front. Could be a good day for him as we're going to see Buchmann and Uran fight it out for the KOM points. And it is going to be Emmanuel Buchmann who takes the points as the breakaway still leads by three minutes, I would say. Uh, to the peloton which have slowed down a bit, but only 29 left So it is the pure climbers that are able to hang on currently uh, as we see Jean Martin Kelderman dropping slightly uh, With 73 kilometers to go and we have a tough downhill now. So let's see what will happen there last kilometer climbing the Paso Pordoi our second a third climb of the day and this time Naira Quintana looks to be the strongest in the breakaway and Loic Fliegen again what an effort by the Belgian but Naira Quintana is going to get the full points as then Martin Buchmann and Latour go for a final push for the remaining points it is a whole category climb so we'll be able to see what the provisional standings is in a bit as Miguel Angel Lopez the last one from the breakaway. Yes, Naira Quintana currently leads the KOM classification as the peloton led by Aje Dozer is around five minutes behind, I want to say. Uh, provisional overall standings, Dillier still in the lead, but already six minutes down with 49 kilometers to go. Now the first acceleration, it is David Godou with 5.5 kilometers to go. Attacks in front of this 26-man group, Astana currently um in front of the peloton um 
good easy going pace for them can't really see any strugglers off the back as Tade Pogacar now, at now attacks they certainly have to get some responses and it does the whole peloton got nearly sprinting as we see Miguel Angel Lopez dropping as he was in the breakaway Aramburu also done for the day Carlos Verona and Lutsenko struggling Pogacar at attack brings back Godou but Ineos with four currently well positioned as we have Hessing and Vingegaard also at the back of the group for Jumbo Visma in front of the group we have four riders Quintana, Uran, Buchmann and Dan Martin the stage win might go to them or it could go also go to the peloton as Tadej Pogacar puts on another acceleration as the whole Ineos train follows them uh, Koska, Gegenhardt, Garin Thomas and Carapaz are strong four riders as we only have 18 riders left in the group and Fliegen group has been caught and Tadej Pogacar has now stopped its acceleration with one and one and a half kilometers to go at the top of the Paso Jao. Buchmann, Quintana, Uran. Who is it going to be for the stage when Astadi Pogacar goes on another attack? And this time the response is late. The Ineos riders are struggling. Kowalski off the back this time. Uh, Valverde and Fuglsang are in good position to follow him, but Tadej Pogacar is not stopping. Is he going to get the KOM points as well? He will, and it could be a duel between Quintana and Pogacar. No, Pogacar says no, and attacks in front of Quintana as well. Um, if he survives this downhill of 12 kilometers, he will be getting his stage win in Tour de Abandon. Well, it is going to be a win for Tadej Pogacar in front of Jakob Fugusang. have closed the gap in the downhill, but Pogacar wins. And the group of eight, Alaphilippe, Carapaz, Urand, Gegenhardt, Quintana, Valverde, Thomas and Pouls. Just 29 seconds behind. Now it's time to look at who's struggling off the back. Uh, and also 24 minutes later, it's going to be uh, the yellow jersey probably losing. It's Jersey. I mean, it was a big gap with Loic Fliegen with a very respectable time, just behind the four minutes. But it could be Jakob Fuglsang who might get the yellow jersey or Loic Fliegen. We'll see. Well, we have crashes. Sagan and Cataneo is down, and Cataneo will abandon the race. I see another crash somewhere in the distance. It was called Bradley was down, but I think he's back up. So good news for him. We have the yellow jersey. The yellow jersey is still descending. 16 minutes past, but he should be fine. That it's the last 10 minutes to the cutoff. As we see, Kares Ball currently 2.1 kilometers left for him. He'll be safe. Tonison and Greipel are in the danger zone. Eight minutes left and six kilometers. It's not going to be easy for them. Bovan. Guarnieri, Bissiger, Edward Thurns, Dimitri Gruzdev, Marco Haller, Tim Merlier, Cataneo who crashed, and Mark Cavendish. Unfortunately, will probably have to overtime limit and has to DNF this tour. As we see Greipel and Tonison, four minutes left for him. And three kilometers left. Are they going to be able to make it in time? Greipel and Tonison. Final few corners, last kilometer for them, but only 30 seconds left. This is very tight. Oh no, they're out. 15 seconds and they're out. Bavan as well, under a minute. But now it's time to head to the results page and see what happened in the general classification. Here we are in the results page and it's Tadej Pogacar and no time gaps for some reason even though it's a mountain stage but Tadej Pogacar wins the stage and let's check the general classification right now. It is Loic Fliegen in yellow for Intermarché Vanti Group Gobert. Uh, 1 minute 30 is Fogusang, 2 minutes 19 is Alaphilippe, Tij Benut in 4th place, Bargil and Thomas. Uh, currently 5th and 6th, uh, Tadej Pogacar currently 16th still, 
but still a long way to go, 11 more stages, and anything can happen really, 10 more stages if my maths are right. The sprint, it's probably going to be won by Dillier, but you never know, he might abandon in the following days. It can happen. The mountain classification is led by Nairo Quintana with the big 40 points. And the young rider is now at Mark Hirschi and the team classification is led by Bahrain Victorious. Oh, hello flag. And look at this list of abandons. We go down and Catanea was all, only withdrawal due to crash but we have out of time limit for 10 riders which means we're left with 92 and the general classification it is Frank Bonnemore our rider two hours 30 minutes down after 10 stages well this was a cracker let's move on to the next one stage 11 will be in Lombardia for Giro di Lombardia from Bergamo to Como 246.9 kilometers uh, a very tough downhill a uh, very crucial three downhill in the final 50 kilometers can't wait to race this we're on the way in Bergamo for the Il Lombardia it's a very long stage so gonna be a fast forward from me till we get to the action we're gonna try to join the breakaway with Frank Bonamour let's see if that is possible and I'll catch you up with the action later on. We have made it into the front group with Frank Bonamour, but I have realized one thing. Currently 92 riders are left in this race and we started with 184, which means we have officially lost half of the peloton in half of the stages. Do you know what that means? <laughs> no, honestly, um, probably less riders mean less crashes. We see in the last stage, there was only, what, four or five crashes and only one abandoned due to a crash. So, but talking about today's stage, we have the breakaway, including the Michael Woods, Jean Martin, Vingegaard, Hamilton, Mohoric, Thomas De Hent, Frank Bonnemou, our rider, um, Campenards, and many more. Uh, could be a breakaway win. 200 kilometers to go and the gap is 3 minutes and 30. Catch you guys later. And we have a crash. Well, I was going to say, I'm uh, normally I would fast forward into some bits, but I have made it into commentary because the, those corners looked dangerous and we have a 12-man crash with Dan Martin. One of the guys behind, Theo Gegenhardt, also 32nd in GC, but no abandons. Just the Peyo Bilbao that happened a few minutes before. Well, another downhill section, and we have a crash. This time, oh, is that nearly the whole front group has crashed? Which meant they are now back with the peloton. The peloton increased the pace on the last few kilometers, and 11 riders out of 14 in the breakaway has crashed which means Frank Bonamour is currently at the front he crashed in the first one not on this one but the peloton's pace is really high currently 72 man at the front and those 12 who've crashed have not made it back and it's bad news for Dan Martin unfortunately Frank Bonamour has been caught as we have attacks Pierre Latour and Thomas De Hent attacked at the bottom of the Madonna del Ghisallo for 10.4 kilometers, 5% average, and they made it with the breakaway guys who've not crashed, which are Woods and Sparagli. So you have a front four and Movistar and Astana controlling the pace at the front. Fuglesang really smelling that yellow jersey currently. But Demar is done for the day, but Loic Fliegen at the middle of the pack looking comfortable right now. Uh, we have a 25-man group, Valverde and Carapaz in great position currently. They're probably going to try something. Kvatkowski is done for the day, so obviously not many domestiques left. Uh, Madua, Soler, Quintana, it's all dropping currently, and we see the strong men at front. Round, what, 18 guys currently. Alphilippe doing decent as well, but such a tough climb. Colma di Sormano as we can go to the percentages of 18% at that section. Ooh, Uran, try, Uran cracks up a bit. 
She's 27 minutes behind, but still important news for the Colombian. Here she, uh, Buchmann, also dropping Barguil, starting to drop. Ala Philippe is cracked. Ala Philippe is cracked with 45 kilometers to go. Molema struggling as we have only 10 left as the Sormano is over. But now we have the downhill and it is a pretty tough one. Uh, not many corners, not but still could be difficulty for some riders. It is pretty steep. The group has decided to go slow on the Sormano downhill and now the Pelton is back up to 16 people. Uh, the group Sagan is maybe back and there's a crash in A16. Oh, actually three riders here, about 10. Bennett is one of them. Verona, Mohoric, Mohoric is down. Interesting. Wait, is that two abandons? We have two abandons. Carlos Verona and De La Parte has abandoned, Suterlin has a puncture. We are back in the pack as they climb Siviglio, 4.3 kilometers in nearly 10% average. Um, 25 man group it is, but you obviously know who were not strong in the final climb, so last climb, uh, so probably gonna see a few guys drop off here as well. Well, it's an attack by Carapaz. And there is the responses now. Miguel Angel Lopez followed by Geraint Thomas. Ineos currently playing it smartly. And Greg Van Avermaet is also going strong. Quintana kind of blocks off Pogacar and Van Avermaet as Miguel Angel Lopez tries to catch Carapaz at the front of the group with 15 kilometers to go in Siviglio. Godou is now struggling. Peter Sagan trying to hang on to the group. So you have Naira Quintana completely left with no energy as Carapaz trying to solo its way to a stage win. Oh, there's a crash! Oh, there's a crash at the front group. Greg Van Arma, Alaphilippe, Benut, Lopez, Molema. It was Van Arma who was down first. But he's back up. Oran also crashed. Oof, this is this is this is interesting. Is Rigoberto Oran gonna Yep, no no abandons, but definitely some hurt with 16 man A3 now. Which means Fuglsang, Carapaz and Thomas have a decent lead. Buchmann and Peter Sagan also doing good work at the front, but they're gonna be about to be caught by the peloton as Miguel Angel Lopez goes for an attack. Molleman and Pogacar follow as the same for Valverde with five kilometers to go. Is it going to be Fuglsang who has the advantage, who has the sprint, or is it going to be Geraint Thomas, the Welshman? Last kilometer, here comes the sprint. Fuglsang on the left, Thomas on the right. It looks to be Fugosang who's going to take the stage win here in Lombardia. And maybe the yellow jersey as well. Carapaz comes in third. And we have a group of eight. Coming one minute 15 behind. But now it's time to check the strugglers of the back. The final rider, Jonas Rutsch, is behind all day. But he's going to be able to make it in the time gap as he reaches the ultimo kilometro with 12 minutes to spare uh, so no abandons today obviously the guys who are left are now much stronger to climbs but this is it's now to look at the results to see the GC Fuglsang with a great win here in Il Lombardia as we look at the general standings and it is Jakob Fuglsang in yellow as Alaphilippe Benut Thomas Following Valverde in fifth. Sprint classification still in Dillier, the mountain in Naira Quintana, the, the youth in he or she, and the team is now in Ineos Grenadiers with Movista one minute behind. Well, as Israel have a trouble from the team classification, but now it is a, a sweet ending to the day. It's time for the Milano Sanremo. We are underway in Milano. 
for the last stage of this episode stage number 12 uh, and it's a long one 292 kilometers so I'm not gonna waste your time and we'll bring you with updates we're gonna try to also win the stage with Branko car or at least put him into a good position as we don't really have many sprinters left maybe Peter Sagan is a favorite Demar is also here former winners of winners, uh, Demar is a winner, uh, but yeah, 89 left in the pack. Um, let's go. Well, I've realized my mistake just a few seconds after the breakaway has been formed, and as you can see, with 150 kilometers to go, nearly at the top of the Turquino, they have 15 minutes of lead, so they're all over an hour uh, behind, so they're not threatening for GC. But yeah, it's going to be one of these guys who's going to win the stage. But yeah, as they go through the Turquino tunnel, we'll see if something happens in this downhill. Well, guess what? It started to rain in this year's Milano Sanremo stage. The breakaway still leads by 15. Not many corners, really. So I don't know how this will be affecting today very easy going peloton but we're about to find out we have a tax we have it we have a tax at the front of the group for the stage win langen thomas stand and tony martin attack to the front group but still 26 kilometers to go and a oh, long way to speak about it but brent van moore and tosh van der sande the domestiques of tom thomas de hent have worked their way up and Thomas Dehan tries again uh, with 25 comps to go in the Cipressa. So good attacking move from him. Oh, we have a crash. Thomas Dehan is down, Herrada is down, Martin is down, Tony Martin and Vakoc is down. Group of five are down and Herrada abandons from the breakaway. We've talked about going to the breakaway being a good strategy about not abandoning with being in a you know a smaller group but they have abandoned so we have Koch, Cabo and Lengen who tries an attack in the front group which is madness really I think the pelotons also increase the pace as I see my riders having nearly no red as they're gonna now tackle uh, the Cipressa downhill they will so eyes on here Oh, there's a crash. There is a mass crash in the downhill of Cipressa. 51 riders and down. And I think it's going to be Valt Poles. It was the first one who crashed. But he's back up. Yele Valais has crashed. Oh, we have abandons. It is three. Fred Wright, Soren Krag Andersen and Dries Davenains have abandoned the race. At and... Do we have another crash? Harada, is that a puncture? No, it's Harada is from the break. What are you doing, Emery? Uh, well, A7 group of 28. Loic Fliegen is here. Tish Benut, the third in GC, is back here. Val Pauls is here as the peloton have increased the, the pace. Buchmann currently working at the front, but at the front group is 43 seconds lead. To the guys who have crashed behind, they're not going to be able to make it back. Campenarts, Koch, Cabo and Lengen. Well, first they have to navigate through this downhill, these corners. Don't want to crash in the final corner after going nearly 300 kilometers at the front group. And now they are in Via Roma, in San Remo. Who's going to be the first one to launch? Koch has an advantage in the sprint stat. As the Langen is a disadvantage, Campenarts launches really early as Koch gets the advantage. Koch goes for it. Jimmy Cabo, Jimmy Cabo goes for it. And Cabo gets it. I think his name is Jimmy. I don't want to be wrong. It's Jeremy Cabo. I'm so sorry. I think Jimmy Cabo is a footballer, but Jeremy Cabo has won the stage as we have a crash in the peloton. In the. It's not even the, the doubt. In the uphill? Really? In the uphill, we have a crash and it's the yellow jersey is down. 
Carapaz is down. Woods, Dillier, then Martin Hamilton. Madness. Madness and Jasper de Boost abandons the race in the climb. Well, say goodbye to your teammate, lads. Now we are going to be focusing on the the downhill of Cipressa for the peloton. Fuglesang tries to come back with his 40-man group. But at the front we have 16-man group who are called E1. For some reason we have another crash. A2 we have another crash. Miguel Anga Lopez is down. Pauls is down again. Gogol. Martin. Uh, oh, Pauls and Mohoric. They're going to make it back up to Bahrain, guys. They do. But again, carnage at the front group as we have the group of 16 and uh, clocking it on 10 minutes 13. Pretty strong, if you ask me. Um, how much time did Fuglesang lose then? It is round about two minutes that Jakob Fuglesang have lost and the groups are now coming in let's look at the results page and then the overview page because I don't think anyone's gonna be out of this time limit and everyone has now completed the downhill let's see what has happened <laughs> Jeremy Cabot was the strongest in the breakaway and takes a great stage win in the stage 12 in Milano San Remo uh, it was well, Fuglesang losing around about 1 minute 40 as we had 5 abandons today. Alfred Wright, Jesus Herrada, Dries Devenains, Jasper De Boost and Soren Krag Andersen. Which means we are left with 84 in the episode, which means our abandon number should be 100. We'll see that on the overview screen, but before I want to show you the GC again as Alaphilippe is now only 37 seconds behind Jakob Fuglesang with nine stages to go. Into the overview screen we go. Well here is our overview screen after 12 stages and we have indeed reached 100 abandons with this episode. Jeremy Cabot won the Milan San Remo. The yellow jersey is at Jakob Fuglesang. The green jersey is at Sylvain Dillier but still Lots and lots of points to be earned. Nairo Quintana keeps his polka dot jersey for now. White jersey is in Mark Hirschi and the team classification is led by Ineos Grenadiers. The next episode we will have the Serre Chevalier stage, the Stelvio downhill stage and by popular demand after what I've seen happen in the real life tour we're gonna have the double fan two downhill stage. That is gonna be a cracker for sure. But for now, this is the end of the episode. My name is Emery99. Be sure to like this video and subscribe if you haven't so you don't miss about the new Tour de Abandon videos. Please comment on what you think and so goodbye.